Well, welcome to the cabin. Hello, everybody. It's hey. Diane at the cabin. Hey, Lisa, how's it going? Hi, Diane. I'm doing well. Good, good. I see we got the fuzz in here. We got Tizzo in here. We got Mr. Doughboy, Mr. Boudreaux. Oh my goodness, we got a whole crew already in there. Hello. Fuzz, I am so sorry to hear about your mom. Yeah. Thank you for coming. We just pray for you, for comfort, and your family. We'll keep you in our prayers. We got six people watching. Five thumbs up. Woohoo! Thank you, everybody. Now, if Lisa, you can keep track of all of that. You're welcome to Fuzz. We love you tons, sweetheart. You're a special lady to us, you know. Now, the, this is uh, the poem writer, the book on the poems that we shared last couple of weeks. She passed away on us. So that's kind of sad. That's kind of yes. sad. But um, yeah, what have you been up to this week, though, Lisa? What's been going on with you? Not one year. Well, we're my normal walk about, <laughs> which we're going to talk about. Um, the buzz, I'm so sorry. My heart goes out to you and your family. I'm very sorry. Um, I'd like to say hello to everybody. Hey, Jay Tizzo and hey, Mr. Pedro and Mr. Doughboy. And yeah, uh, the truck at the beginning, um, that thumbnail was compliments of Mr. Doughboy. Thank you, Mr. Doughboy. All right. That truck. If I could do that in my yard, I would. But yeah, it's a cool truck. Well, Joe hoards all the trucks. He, you know, he's Mr. No, I need that. I might repair that. Like, Does he have a perfectly good one right out there? Let me just, you know. <laughs> does he have um, a, like a cool old, does he have antique trucks like that one? No, unfortunately he doesn't. They're antique according to, you know, if they're 30 years old. Yeah, they're antique. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's got this really cool white truck. But he, you know, it reminds me of the truck that my grandpa used to drive. And, um, you know, it's a stick shift and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but um, he wants to repair that. Carrie wants to steal it. She likes those kind of trucks too. But I love the fact that they put it into a flower bed. Yeah. That was the thing that was so beautiful. And Mr. Doughboy picked up on that. And that was what was cool. Thank you for doing that. <clears throat> Excuse me, like guys, I've been uh, wrestling with allergies. It's pollen season. And this is there. So you brought them inside. <laughs> I brought them inside to add more aggravation. Yes. <laughs> but this is uh, this Great. is nettle. Isn't that beautiful? That was in the backyard. It's a young one. And what Wait. you see hanging back here? The goldenrod. Yeah. Goldenrod. Did I say nettle again? Yes. <laughs> That's just silly. <laughs> Joel's gone. I'll never hear that one down. So yeah, let's, let's excuse me. Let's um Nick Nick isn't here today. Yes, let's talk about Nick. Nick isn't feeling well. We need to comfort her as well or pray for her. Keep her in your prayers. She's really struggling in the last couple of days, but especially today. For her to not come, she's hurting. So um if you guys could keep the stomach. Her. Uh, you know, every be okay. a variety of things. Yeah, she just needs some rest and re she needs to get better. We need her back. If I could ask a favor later on, if you have time, could you check out our punny video? This is Tizzle wrote and directed it, and she is feeling self conscious. Okay, we'll go take a look. Oh, uh, yay. yeah. Um, are you, let's see, you should be a mod in here, right? Yes, you are. Well, Who, me? Well, yeah. Um, if you guys don't have Mr. Tizzle, I don't know if I have him. Anymore. I don't know how to do any of that stuff, you guys. I'm so sorry. I'm super technically challenged when it comes to this. Well, hello, Big E. Good to see you. Thank you for coming, Big E. I appreciate that. Um, let me see if I have him in my Big notepad. E. I'm this one. This could be. I have him downstairs in the other computer, but I don't know. I have them in my notepads up here. No, I don't. Okay, sorry, guys. Tizzle will work on that, okay? I promise we'll get that put together. Sorry. Good idea. If you can find an older grain wagon, you can cut it down into a mobile garden. True. Mobile garden. Good idea. That would be interesting. I drag around a little red wagon in my garden with all my, my junk in it. 
<laughs> go go right. I have a red wagon that I put holes in it and once tried to grow stuff out of it, but I don't think it had enough soil in it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of years ago. A penny bitty. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Jay Tizzo. Thank you. There it is. He put it in there. Thank you, Tizzo. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Wait, are you? He's a mod. He can do it. Da, 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 da. I don't even know who my mods are. That's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, we've got some pictures to show you. You guys have been so wonderful to send in photos and videos and different things um, that have been coming around. And I'm going to show you this one first. This is from Mr. V Rose. And I've got. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. <laughs> what is it? Well, I don't know. He said he hopes that Joe and I are well and the family is keeping up. And he found this little birdie soaking up the sun after a light morning rain shower. He said, I hope it brightens up our day and we could share it. So, oh, yeah, goodness. he's in Florida, you know. Yeah. Those are my favorite. I used to know the name of that. And oh, those gosh. are my favorite. It's a tropical plant. Yeah. But isn't that beautiful? Yes. That's just very he, he didn't put what it is. Let's ask Mr. No, Boone. he didn't. Um, does anybody know what that plant is? Bird of Paradise. Could be. That's you know what it was. is. You're right, Defuzz. That is a bird of paradise. Defuzz, did you say that you were a master gardener? Somebody said they're a master gardener. And Budo oh. agrees that he is okay. Uh, bird okay. of paradise. Which it looks like a bird. Because you know, you see the little blue beak. Oh, that's well. gorgeous. That is just gorgeous. It is. I agree. So yeah. And then you remember last week we were talking about various different hey, bugs and plants. I'm sorry. We were talking about different bugs on Nick's plants. Yeah. Oh, it could be also a giant bird of paradise. The fuzz has them. Thank you, DeFuzz. Appreciate your input on that. Um, and we're talking about and always wanting more silver. Shared her, told her, told us about her um, greenhorn worm. Well, there it is, guys. Oh, oh, the left picture is the greenhorn worm. Okay, I didn't know what it was called. I've seen them before. They're pretty gnarly, right? Ooh, yeah. And I don't know what it left unless it left eggs. That might be its eggs. On the other plant, on the other picture, but yeah, right. wow, she, so not master gardener, Lisa. <laughs> oh, okay. Somebody <laughs> in the community is a master gardener, and I'm I I didn't write it down who who it is, and I really want to remember. Yeah, we really do. Yeah, and then I don't know, Miss Wasp eggs. Okay, Boudreaux is dropping the knowledge again. Those are wasp wasp eggs. eggs. Wow. So it's not from the green horn worm. That's from wasp. So a wasp lays its eggs on the worm? On the plant. Let me go put that back up. Go back. See that? Oh, maybe it is on the worm. Weird. Ugh. Oh, oh that just weird. sounds pretty horrible. Yeah. So the wasps are parasites? E. Right? Okay, so wait a minute. Rhonda, are you are you do you have two two identities going right now? Are you stinky, smelly, and lucky one? <laughs> she can be, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the lava will eat the worm. Oh, that's just so rough. Oh. I don't know if that's the worm though. Yes, it is. It looks like it is. It does. Though. There's Nick. Oh my gosh, you like hey. oh, yes. hi Nick. Thank you, Nick. Oh, needed to find her name. Oh. He lives in North Carolina. Thanks. Yeah, I was like, who is the master gardener? Is it Greg? N.H. Greg? No, North Carolina. Who is that? Good questions. We're so yeah, glad. You know what? She's in stream. That's wonderful. Thank you, Nick. I'm glad. Yeah. You're oh, at least she's in chat. That's awesome. Thank you, Nick. You know, when you don't feel good, you don't want to, you just want to, and she didn't know how long she could sit. 
I get it. Bless her heart. Anyway, let's get rid of that icky thing and let's look at something that's, more. That's just really rough. That I is. Think. Right, right. Well, since Nick is in, let's show what Mr. Hampton Consultants is doing. Oh, yeah, this is really nice. I'm going to go to the first one. Oh, my. The new bonsai trees. Nick, Lisa, and Diane. Who's who? I don't know, but there's one he's getting started with. And he just planted them. He just bought them. Okay, so mine is the crepe myrtle. And Which I think one? that's the first one. Okay. Can you go back? That is please? the first one. Is it? And then there's this one. So which tree is which? Stay tuned for progress. Is what I said. I don't know who's who. which one belongs to who. I they think can get it's six inches long, Mr. Boudreaux. He yeah, he took a cutting, and it, it looks like he took a cutting. I wondered how to do the propagation of this, these trees, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Okay. We'll have to have another stream with him. Right, for sure, for sure. That's why I say stay tuned to the progress. But isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, what tree did he give to you? Which one I don't did know. he give? I don't oh. know which one. I don't. Nick, do you remember? In fact, I don't think in my email he even said. So I'm not really sure. He did do the one that um, he was talking to Nick about. It's still, it's just so thoughtful and so much fun. It is. It is. That is very, very cool. So on another note, let's see. Look at something really pretty. Here we go. This is from Sean. I don't know. <gasps> Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to go to the beginning. Look at the photography. Oh, my gosh. I know. Isn't he great? So, Sean Krause oh, shared more of his. That's a bog bean. Isn't that pretty? Nice. For real. Look how delicate that is. There's little fibers. I know. Isn't that pretty beautiful? So, a bog bean. Okay. What, what else does he have? Echinacea. Yeah, we know echinacea. Boy, he's a good photographer. Isn't he? He really is. I peeled some, I've got some echinacea from my echinacea plant that I planted the beginning of the spring in a pot, in a grow bag. And I've got not a, I think I had four blossoms. And here's the marsh marigold. I've got to bring this mouse closer somehow. Now, this has medicinal properties, I think. Um, okay. I was one of the marigolds, and I think it's this one. Okay. This might be the one you're talking about, yeah. Nick is saying, hit the like button, and I forgot to do that. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the prairie smoke. Isn't that pretty? To the left. Yes. And then check that out. The How unusual. Form. Yeah. So where does Sean live? What part of the country? He lives in New York. Wow. So what part of your New York? I'm not really sure. He's not in here yet. I don't know if he'll be able to make it. It's hard to say. Boy, that would okay, be a fun find seal. Now, we, we have, have this. Can we go back to the squirrel corn? Sure. Isn't that pretty? Looks like a squirrel and corn. I don't know. I'm not sure I don't get that. I really don't get the squirrel part, but I'm thinking squirrels eat this. Like they must oh, be little, like corn. Maybe they're like, this is really tiny, like little coin, cor cor corn kernels. <laughs> I'm so glad Joe's not here to, to play with that. <laughs> Nick said he's upstate New York. Okay. I'm going to okay. go to the next one. Now, the Solomon seal, I do have around here, but I have not seen those little kind of like um, bell flowers. Yeah, I've seen them before thinking that they were lily of the valley, but it's not. Almost looks like a lily of the valley, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. But it's so cool. It's so pretty. And look at the yeah. little drops of clear photograph photography. You have two flying squirrels? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Isn't that Rocky and Bullwinkle? <laughs> look at the star flower. It almost looks Rock, Rocky. Now, isn't that an interesting plant? On on a tree. But more importantly, the leaves and how they're formed. I like it. I like it. That's kind of confusing. 
but it's a star flower, which means a flower looks like a star. There's Can Can. Can Can, hi. Listening for the moment, but I'm with you. Okay, thank you, Can Can. Glad you're here. Thank you. That's very cool. So for those of you who can't see see what we're looking at, um, Sean Krause is a photographer and he's got some really beautiful flowers that he sent the pictures to Diane. Yes, and if you have some, the e my email is right underneath my name, dianescabin22 at gmail.com. Send what you're finding out and about as you're, you know, being aware of different plants that are popping up. Let's see what you've got in your neck of the woods. I, I can say I haven't ever seen that. I'll keep my eyes open. A trout lily. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. It looks like a regular lily, but look at the leaves. It's got yeah. colors on the leaves. It's gorgeous. I, I did getting... get that next, but I couldn't get it into here before we started. I'm sorry. Steve. Hi, Rayno. We'll have that for next week. Rayno, hello. But isn't that cool? Trout lily. One, yeah. I suppose it's trout because of the leaves and then the lily, the flower. I that know. makes sense. And white columbine. That is gorgeous. Look at that shot. I love wow. how the white tails from the flower fall down. Almost looks like a, um, oh, what am I thinking of? What a beautiful. Oh, a pops, afternoon to you. That's okay, but you're here now, and we got your your uh, uh, your letter today too. Hello, RC Pops. It's always good to see you, big brother. Um, honeysuckle is what I'm thinking of. Oh, honeysuckle okay. has a tendency to have those tails down too. You know what I mean? The little tails behind the flower. Hmm. Up next, Shroom Day. Hi. <laughs> you made it, Shroom Day. Great to see you. Look at these photographs. I wonder if he grows them. Do you know? Does he grow any of these? I don't know. I don't know if he just took the flower, the pictures. Shroom Day, if you send me an email to dianescabin22 at gmail.com, you will get an email to remind you that we are coming live in a couple of hours. I send out emails. So if you guys do send us stuff, I will put you on an email list and you'll get firsthand what's going on. Oh, I was going to send um, an attachment to go with that, but I'll send it afterwards. Drive safely. Yes, Shroom absolutely. Shroom day. Yellow flag iris. So it's an iris. It's yellow and it acts like a flag. It flows like interesting. It's beautiful. And that's the end of those. Thank you, Sean Krause, for sending in those pictures. Yeah, yeah. Very impressive. Wasn't that fun? <clears throat> so on your walkabout, you've been finding some interesting things. Do you want to share that now or do that later? Um, that's okay. Go ahead if you want to. It's up to okay. you. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, guys, and I'm going to keep you. <coughs> well, you know what I do? There we go. This is cool. It is cool. It was so pretty. I, I, I got that at the Arboretum. I, I was just out walking around looking actually for the pawpaws. Pawpaws, I have a fruit and um, I, I wanted to, to, you know, forage a little bit, but they, they were already gone. Um, but I, I do know that the pawpaws are, are ripe now and ready for picking. And instead I found these, the American beauty berries and they're just so pretty. It was, Actually, oh, that's deeper purple than what you see here. Uh, I didn't know that they had medicinal properties, but I do know that when you see purple, it's a pretty good bet. You've got something there that's going to, you know, be toxic. And, <laughs> and, and healthy. Yeah, but look at this, like um, malaria, right? Fever. Um, well, it said that they use the roots, leaves, and branches and plants yeah, for treatment of malaria, fevers, rheumato rheumatism, and stomach and dysentery. Wow, sour These stomach. Are, sorry. Yeah, this was this was new from from what we've been finding. So I thought I'm going to be looking at the LSU uh, ag site to see more about this, and um, you know, check it out. Like, what if it is something that's edible? I want to try it. 
Not the berry. I think it's the leaves that are. I'm not sure that the berries are. Right. I just really want to know more about this one. And I'm assuming this is the same thing. Yeah, I, I sent you a bush, more. and then this is the actual plant. Rather yeah, than so people could get a, an idea of how big Where, it is. What they look like when you go find them. Yeah, and this is great for pollinators, too. So I will be asking um, at the Arboretum, uh, you know, if I can take some of this. I'm sure that they'll say yes. They do let us do that. So, yeah, I was real excited. <laughs> that is awesome. It, it is pretty. What's the next one? What else did I send you? You sent me the wildflower from the wild oh, this Lady wasn't... Bird Wildflower Center. You know, I actually lived real close to that. And I, when they opened it up, they had this grand opening. And at the time I was doing custom bedding and drapery, I made 28 or 30 table cloths for the Arboretum celebration and about 50 napkins. Oh, cool. It was very cool. And I got to be a part of the grand opening of the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. Oh, it was amazing. Nice memory. Yeah. It, is a, it was a nice memory. Gosh, that's like 20 years ago now or something, but or more. But this is a it's a native plant in North America, but it's the blue mist flower. These are all over the place. Right? I know. I'm seeing them everywhere. Yeah. And look you at know, this. Treats skin infections and sore throats. Imagine that. Sore throats, especially. I suppose you would just do a tincture or you would do a tea and gargle with it, right? I I didn't get that far in looking it up. I just saw them this week and then I started. I didn't do my deep dives. So, um, but I did notice this one ha, uh, is uh, applied to wounds to stop bleeding. I really want to know what property is doing that in these plants. You know, it's an astringent. Mm -hmm. is the word I keep hearing. But yeah, you got a point. What's nice about those is that, you know, you can trade it out. For example, if plantain is not heavily available, this may. If, oh, yeah. if yarrow is not available, this may be. And at the same time, for we'll talk about this a little bit later, but, you know, you can only drink goldenrod tea for about seven to ten days and you need to take time off of it. Because it's, it's like a medicine. The plant itself is like a medicine. Whereas you can drink sting and nettle every single day. That's the kind of thing we need to, I, I need to take down to the next level to find out just how do you consume these things. Right. I'm, I'm just finding them now and seeing them at different times of the year because I really wasn't expecting too much. You know, it's after summer. I thought most of the, the cool plants are already came and went but there's They're really showing themselves. flowers now too yeah yes and apparently so this gets really big up to three feet high i haven't seen that but they are it's everywhere now this is from the food forest that's where i was okay. when i got this one okay next take care of you nugget. bless you and thanks for coming in next appreciate it thank fluff you nugget. <laughs> fluff nugget. Yeah. There's sean sean you missed your pictures <laughs> you have a blessed day too, Nick. Get some rest. That can help you identify the plants and herbs. Nick's does. She's got a good one. But, um, well, the one I use, Biggie. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to? No, go. Well, the one I use is free. Um, you have to go through the ads, but it's also a little, a little iffy because people are, are putting their own suggestions what what they think it is and i think that's the free free part of it is that you have to be careful and really look through the the options so let me look and see what it is right hey freaking awesome how you doing freaking there awesome. is one that i i got i was using and i can't remember what it was and i got rid of it because you know i'm going through walking in the woods and in my life this is where i live in the woods and i could only do five plants a day and I already had oh. so, this is and plus you had to take a picture of the plant at the time rather than upload a plant. 
So. Oh, okay. So this one, you can take the picture and then upload it later. It's called Leaf Snap, and you can do as many as you want, um, but it just, you have to go through the ads. Leaf Snap. Leaf and Snap. I'm going to write this down. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to get so close, guys. <laughs> So I'm going to see you up awesome. close and personal. <laughs> it's, it's a good little app. It gets you started. It'll give you some suggestions, and then you can go look it up and see maybe from these. Uh, I like to go to the um, educational sites, the, the schools, the universities, the ag centers, Virginia Tech. There's identifiers out there online, too. But right. it, it gets, there's just so many different you know, possibilities. If you're taking the picture though, Biggie, get the leaf, make sure you're getting the leaf and the flower if there is one, because you'll have different options to choose to check by flower or check by leaf. And when you're doing the leaves, you want to get, get the way the leaves are on the stem. You know, if you're, if you're, here's your stem, if your leaves are staggered, you know, that the way the leaves grow matter. True. So, um, I would just say when you're taking your pictures, just try to get a good look at that, the stem and how they grow. True. Absolutely. I'm going to go to the next one. I don't have a clue about any of this either, Biggie, and I'm learning as I go. So We all is, are. You know what? We all are. Yeah. So this was a nice find. When I saw this, I, I pretty much hit my head on these things when I was walking. This is in um, one of the Chesapeake uh, Parks we have a lot of parks out here so i frequent them i'll take my fur babies on walks to different parks and this is one that's close to my home and they have the the black walnuts so i was like yay i could never remember when they um are are you know come into season and you have to get them quick because they go rancid and the squirrels go so. we had a big walnut tree at the house that we lived in before we moved back here back home here to, to where we're at now. It was huge. But man, I tell you what, those buggers are mess. I mean, I know yeah, that they, they, they're, they're worse than acorns <laughs> because I think they're so much bigger, but they, I, I would be mowing the yard and flinging walnuts all over the place. I know, but you know, think about it. They're really expensive. And well, and I don't know walnuts. that you could eat them and we never really tried, but yeah, the squirrels, there, they were hiding, squirrels got into that garage over there and they were hiding walnuts in that place. Oh, I was like, what in the world? Plus when they do get down, cause you got to peel off the green spot and I don't really know how the walnuts work, but, um, and then inside is the nut itself. Yeah. And I don't know when the season is or what the deal is. It's but now we, it's, that's what I'm finding out is that it's like right now. So, so before it cools down. Yeah, because when they get brown, I think they start to get rancid. So I'm I'm yeah, gonna they're... double check this and see if I can't harvest some. And you know what? How do you do? You, do you just roast them? What do you do? I don't know. I don't have a clue. But this is something I really want to know because the black walnuts. You know. You yeah, can, they're good. That's a that's a winner. So oh, freaking awesome! I live in a house. <laughs> well, the fuzz. I'm in a house. I could be in the cave, sometimes in the tree. Yes, I do hunt deer, hunt bear because they're being naughty. And uh, buffalo, we don't, uh, the neighbor's got it and he's kind of in the fence and it, you know, we touch that thing. It's, we really do have buffalo here, but it was, you know, brought in, it's domesticated, whatnot. But yeah, I'm only really kidding. But yeah, I really am in the woods. I am so far in the woods. I have trees all around my house. There you have it. <laughs> That's funny. So <laughs> anybody um, was being funny, but it's true. And I used to hunt deer, but now, oh, speaking of that, I went outside to cut this, the goldenrod in the backyard. This is a young plant. Um, probably wasn't out there last year. Uh, and, and the deer were trying to come in to eat. And I was like, oh, babies, come back. <laughs> Baby, come back. I didn't mean to scare you away. So yeah. The deer were there, and I was like, wouldn't that be cool to be able to show them out in the backyard during the live stream? I thought about that. That would be awesome. Well, tell me more about the um, goldenrod. You want to hear about the goldenrod? Are you guys ready for goldenrod? I have no pictures. We got them right there. I just realized 
I have no pictures. You don't need but, pictures. You got them in a cup right by you. <laughs> I think that will suffice. <laughs> <laughs> Here is goldenrod. What do you notice about the goldenrod? Oh, I got a spider crawling up one. Go away, buddy. The goldenrod, if you'll notice, the leaves. Now, this might be what you thought you were seeing, right? Lisa? What are we talking about? Goldenrod? See the flowers, how it is? Maybe this is not goldenrod. Maybe it just looked like goldenrod, so I cut it. So I'm going to pull one down that I am drying in the back. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. If, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I. I don't know. I see your the pretty ones in the back. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're hung up there so I can dry it, and um, they they really are a beautiful plant. They started off nice and bright, and they kind of look like oh dear, they're already drying out. Wow, that didn't take long. <sighs> It is the golden plant to fight against allergies. I've been drinking that, and you can drink it like one or two, three cups a day for five to ten days to help with allergies. They're really powerful with allergies. But I'm going to try to put it up close. They're starting to fuzz out. But do you see what I mean about how they just kind of... Yeah, get white fuzzy, yep. And then, I don't know, look at the difference. This is, you know... Just it says some kind of ragweed or something. The people did confuse it with ragweed, but it's not ragweed. But look at how pointy. Okay, look at how pointy the flowers are. I should have went down the end of the driveway. Well, did you find out what the other one was? Not yet. Oh. Yeah. You see how small these leaves are? Mm -hmm. They're the same, same kind of style of leaf. You guys can see it. And see see the leaves on these same kind of shape. So this is just a young one. Maybe this is several a couple of years old or second year or whatever. I don't know how well they grow, or if they're perennial. You know, you know, like Mulan. We knew that you um, you won't get the flowers until it's second year, and you want to cut the first year, take the first year leaves. This is another plant that is really good for lung health because it does help with the respiratory upper respiratory now that's why i should have had a picture i don't want my name out there yeah. mr boudreau anyway. you're right she does when, it. he look look at his comment i didn't see it honey from your area will help with your allergies and we talked about this well here's wait till you hear wait till you hear just wait Yes, raw honey from your area is definitely positive. Do you know across our street, Kitty Corner, we have beekeepers. They just started it this year. So I need to find out who those people are and get to know my neighbor so I can get their honey. Um, goldenrod is really good. It's called a solid, solid dago. Canadian goldenrod is pretty much what we have here. And it means, solid dago means to make whole. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So it works on upper respiratory, such as allergies, sinuses, and even the re recent virus that we've been struggling with for the last few years now. And it helps remove the excess mucus. This is why it's for lung health, kind of like the Mulan, only it really attacks it really good. It also is good for the urinary tract infections, which consists of kidney support, flushing away all that garbage. And um, when I was doing the research and listening to the YouTube video, they kept saying Candida, and I'm like, what in the world is Candida? But apparently it affects your urinary tract. Anyway, it flushes out all that stuff. Something about too much sugar in your system can get you that. Okay. It is an anti-inflammatory for chronic inf inflammation, such as hemorrhoids, internal bleeding. It'll help subside the bleeding. Say you're bleeding, you know, the hemorrhoid is bleeding or whatever. I don't know how that works. You can make it a salve, I think, probably for that purpose. But, you know, this is like another side option for really serious situations that plantain maybe can't touch. I'm not really sure. Um, it's a wound healer. It's great for burns, cuts, um, can be used as a poultice on the cuts. 
It closes the wound up actually, and it stops the bleeding. Um, what we did with the yarrow when I cut my finger, you guys, it, previous video, um, I put the yarrow on, but then I saw the little pieces of the plant was showing in or staying in my finger in the wound. Whoa. I it, and I pulled that out because I didn't want that. And that's when I went and got the plantain and I crinkled up and, you know, wrinkled up the plantain, put it on my finger and taped it like a Band-Aid onto it and kept that on there. And within 20 minutes, it stopped the bleeding. Within two weeks, it's healed. And here it is. You can't even tell I had a cut. No scar. So amazing. is I love plantain, but now goldenrod does that too. I didn't so, know that. I didn't either. So isn't that interesting? So is it the leaf? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, um, it is a skin toner for the skin. It's a great toner for the skin. It helps with psoriasis, eczema, and other skin irritants. So if you made a, a lotion of some sort with the goldenrod in, it would help subside those rashes and things. I wonder if that would help. Hmm. I know somebody that has some serious, serious skin breakouts that they have to use um, um, prednisone to keep that at bay. Um, it's an antifungal. So you know what? This is going to be really good for foot wash, like athlete's foot. Is Paul Hampton in here? And who is who's that other guy that you call him Paul Hampton out for athlete's foot? No, I was actually he was asking me about a lotion, and I was thinking this would be a great oh, boy. <laughs> These guys are getting crazy. So so fluff knock it. Nugget. Well, somebody oh. else was they sending me emails if I had these things. And you know what? Oh, that's who it was. <laughs> Never mind. I, I can't share that person's name. Um it was it's an antifungal, so it would be good foot wash for like foot issues such as athlete's foot, but because it's really good for the skin and helps with the healing and closes up the wound and everything, you would make a tea out of that. Um out of you know the the, the goldenrod, and that's why I'm drying it, is because I'm think I'm gonna be using it more for feet. How many times do you have cracked feet? Um, um my mom gets cracked foot feet quite a bit. Joe sometimes do. Um, I definitely get rough, sore feet, especially when I'm barefoot a lot, running around outside and all summer long. Um, but when I wear socks all the time, I don't have that so much. But without wearing shoes, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> Excuse me. This foot wash would be excellent to help heal those cracks, sore, awful feet. And it would definitely help with... Um, any of that soreness, closing up those wounds, softening it up, and then put lotion on with a golden rod as well. I'm sure inside of that, um, put some socks on to soothe that, to get that back to normal. That would be pretty awesome, don't you think? Yeah. Um, it also energizes and rejuvenates your body. Well, that makes sense because it's called to make whole. So, and I agree, if I have some goldenrod tea right here that I mixed in with some water because it's real strong in the refrigerator. I do that on purpose. Um, and uh, it definitely energizes, but do you hear the cleaning out of the mucus? I've been drinking it all morning. One glass, that's all I need for the day. Wow. So Freaking Awesome says, thanks to my cactus accident, my feet are in bad shape. Well, I oh. think Diane has a plant for you. <laughs> Have I got a plant tea for you? That's right. It is a diuretic. It assists with it assists with digestion. So if you like have a lot of flatulence or you know like <laughs> meat, you know gas, um, it you can drink the goldenrod tea and it kind of settles down the gas. And oh um, what a yeah. versatile plant! I know that. Well, that's the word to make whole. It's kind of like self heal. Wherever self-heal needs to go, when you drink the tea, it goes and attacks whatever needs to be fixed. There's Nick. She's back. Hey, you know, Nick. Just for a minute, she was helping us with the Steve, Steve's um, plants. The trees he did for us. Oh, Chinese. Did, Nick got the Chinese one. You got the, what is it, chinkapin oak, and mine was crepe myrtle. Okay, which one? No, we can know which one was the oak. Go back to his, um, go back. 
if you can. Oh, here Remember is. we were, we were, you don't have to, if it's too hard to get back up. There you go. Okay. So that's the crepe myrtle, I think. And really the only reason I know is because of the cutting and then the next page. So which there one? There you go. So th that's, we've got the oak and then we have, um, the oak is the, the one on my left, right? Okay. And then the one on the right is... Chinese, what is it called? A Chinese, what was it? Chinese tallow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think so. Nick, I don't know if you're still out there, but I think that's what it is. That's my guess. It might work for dog farts. I think it is okay there, the fuzz. <laughs> Just let them have a little bit of goldenrod in their water and maybe they'll do just fine. Now, there are a couple of ways. How do we use this amazing plant? Well, guys, you know me. We're going to tincture it. We're going to tea it. We're going to do whatever we can to. Um, I do have a um, printout that I can email you on what to do with it. But pretty much you're going to do. Here's the thing with tincture, especially with goldenrod. You make a tincture with dried plant material and your ratio of is one to five so five times whether it's glycerin or vodka that you put in to one part um plant matter and it's the same process as we've done a, a tincture before but with fresh plant matter it's a one to two ratio and i think that's because it has to hydrate the plant back up to pull the oils out oh, that's which okay. makes sense to me and again, you'll hold, keep it in a dark place, um, shaking it every once in a while for four to six weeks. Um, and then you strain it out and bottle up as we showed you before. Any kind of bottle, make sure, you know, um, for tea, you can drink three cups a day for not, but not to exceed seven to 10 days. Take a break for another week, then you can go back to it again. Just like you would regular medicine, you would take your medicine, whether it's sinus or whatever, for seven to 10 days. You would drink your tea for seven to ten days. You can drink it up to three times a day, cups a day. Depending on how big your cups are, I'm thinking actual eight ounces. Mm -hmm. um, partly the reason I think they do that is because you don't want your body to get immune to the properties in the plant. If you think about that, what? Freaking awesome. Okay, here's his comment. Since I'm using voodoo, witchcraft, and real foods, celery peppers, and healing sounds, any extra help will any extra help will help. Voodoo witchcraft? <laughs> that ain't gonna help you. Sorry. <laughs> Freaking awesome. Um, Defuzz, answer to your question: How does golden rod grow and where? Golden rod grows. Well, these I picked in a field just completely you know i knew that that wasn't sprayed or whatever but it just grows wild and the best time to pick goldenrod is when the flowers show when they bloom and you can find them in the fields you can they do grow on the sides of the roads and i've got some on the side of our driveway um but i don't pick on the side of the road because they treat the road with creosol so if it's in our, like this came in my backyard just blocked itself right in there. I think that's goldenrod. I'm going to double check that before I do anything with it. Because these plants, these flowers are awfully, it might be a different species of goldenrod because you have the Canadian and there's some other one. There's a couple of, smells like goldenrod. There's a couple of different species of it. So you know what? Maybe that is goldenrod that you had, Lisa. I don't know. Just I'm, to do it. I'm just going to wait and ask one of the gardeners when I see him next time. There you go. And it does grow about four foot tall. And Oh, I like, it actually can grow six feet tall here. And it has. I've had some this tall. With Wilson. Little, there he is. Wilson. Not going to say what I was thinking. No, you probably shouldn't. Why? Okay. We're talking about golden rod. Golden rod. Right. Do you know Wilson? 
real well? No. You don't want him to say what he was thinking. Okay. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Just to be safe. Thank you for behaving, Cyclonic. <laughs> this is a family channel and it's a daytime show. Just saying. <laughs> So I haven't seen any of the puffy goldenrod like you, you know, all, the version that you have. I saw it. I used to see that in Pennsylvania and Maryland, but I haven't seen it down here. And I'm sure it's just because I, I haven't really been looking hard for it. But I might go along the railroad tracks and see if I can see any out that, that way. Yeah, be careful where you go, though, to make sure, you know, like you say, the chemicals on the railroad tracks. Yeah, you'll see. It. I just want to find it. But these aren't puffy. The only reason these are puffy because they're drying. They kind of look, act like dandelion flowers. When you dry them, they get all watery. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, I don't know. Did I answer your question, Defuzz? They grow everywhere. They're just very, wow. very native to our land. Um, Rough well, Nugget good. likes pretzel rods. So do I. Mm -hmm. I buy them in the great big containers. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just eat the salt off of them. <laughs> Here's Hampton Consultants. Hey, hello from the swamp. Greetings from a tired old swamp. Yeah. Um, hello, Steve. We have a question for you, Steve Hampton. Um, you can take, okay, uh, ba, 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 what am I looking for? Boil the plant in water and let it simmer until cooled enough to place your feet into a foot bath pan and then soak for 15 to 20 minutes to assist in the dryness to get bring more moisture to kill the fungus, to heal the cracking and the bleeding wounds that we all sometimes get. That would be, that's how you do a, a foot wash. Just take the plant like you would make a tea. Put it in the pan, put your feet in there, and go. Now, you can infuse oil as well for making, like, topical lotions and salves and stuff. You can even use soap. I saw um, one um, deal where a lady made some soap out of the goldenrod, and she uses it because it is so good and healing to the skin. Um, you just place the plant material in olive oil or sweet almond oil. Mm. And a plant about three quarters full of a jar. Fill the rest of the jar. Make sure the plant is fully covered. And again, shake well daily. Put it in a safe, dark place for six to eight weeks. Um, and be sure you're, to, you label it. Label your jar. Put job on there. Label your jar so that you know what date you had that um, infuse started. You could also infuse it on very, very, very low heat in um in a pan in oil and i've done that too to just so when i get to make this salve and the lotion or whatever just to make sure that's good and infuse um doing it this way slow six to eight week is means you've got some on the shelf down the road when we're able to make more mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can also infuse in raw honey because raw honey is very, very medicinal and good for the body, especially locally grown <clears throat> or locally found and raised. Um, basically, it's done the same way as the tincture. But this type of fusion could be made and you drop it into your tea. You already have your sweetener. You can use the raw honey to sweeten your tea if you don't like it, if you need a little sweeten. I like it regular. I, I can handle bitter. Um, but... Sometimes I like it a little sweet as well. And you can even spread it on toast. Isn't that interesting? Now, how would it taste? Well, you know what? The tea tastes amazing. It's just going to be infused honey. So, I don't know. I've never tried that the honey. Really good. Because, that, huh? would be, that would be really good. It really would. Um, and it's great for colds when we have colds to do that. So, you know. Um, when you want to harvest it is when they bloom is when you want to harvest. Um, but, uh, I'm trying to read from my notes, guys. Sorry. Thank you for bearing with me. But goldenrod, um, when it blooms, like I did, you can hang it upside down to dry, store it in a glass jar and use it for a tea. The flowers are great for the tinctures. As a tea, it does taste similar to green tea. And it really does. I have not. That's nice. Uh, it is. 
Um, I don't find it as bitter as green tea. I find it a little sweeter. Green tea is not supposed to be bitter. Then it's old tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I went when I was at the arboretum, I was looking for um, just keeping an eye on the camellias. Um, those are the tea, the tea bushes. Oh yeah, there's it's. I don't know what season it is when they'll start to, to actually seed. So good, to buzz. Let me know how it goes. If you use what we suggest or we talk about, yeah, feedback on that would be great. It'd be really, really good. Now, Mr. Hampton Consultants, we got to go back here a second. Anybody have any more questions about the goldenrod? If not, I don't know. I take, I like, you know, it has a little bit more fruitier taste than green tea. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. The fuzz is, is asking if you could make a honey butter with it, and I'm sure you could. Oh, sure. Great idea. <clears throat> They've also done, um, you can even infuse honey with garlic which I've never had that, but I heard that's really good. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of into the honey butter <laughs> so much for the diet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, and you know, here's the thing. Garlic is a natural antibiotic. So if you yeah. moved it with honey, put it on toast or whatever. I've then, never combined the two. I never have either, but that would really be healthy and would really be good. You have a question, Cyclonic? But I said I was going to behave. Okay, then, okay, as long as it's clean and appropriate, Wilson, ask away. If not, refrain. <laughs> Try drinking water when you are tempted to snack. It feels That's because hot. Wilson, Wilson was talking about um, he's changing his eating habits to be more healthy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That is true, Can Can. You want a snack? Go grab some water. It fills you up. And the craving for the snack does go away. You're right. It does help. Um, so, Mr. Hampton Consultants, are you still here? I need, can you watch, can you watch YouTube? YouTube chat is always so much faster than. It's just hanging right now. Steve, are you still online? Yep. He says that deck looks familiar. <laughs> okay. Who is the bonsai to the left? Well, I already made a guess, Steve, okay? <laughs> we need uh, to know who the bonsai to the left, left is, who the new bonsai to the right is. That's, and, you, that's the oak is to the left, right? I hope. Don't curse the water, Wilson. T put love in it. You stand to the east and you go, you put love in it and you go, love, thank you, water, love, 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 and That's put right. love in it. Speak to it, dude. So, Steve, which is which? Please. I think the crepe myrtle is on the other picture. So. Gypsy wolves, hello. The one on the left yeah. is the oak. Yes, it's yours. So, yay. Which tree? Which? This is the crepe myrtle. This one is? Yeah, I think so. Right, Wilson? Hey, Gypsy. So, Steve, right? Are we right? The one on the left is the Tinnapin Oak. It is Diane. Okay, so right. going back. Tinnapin Oak. Okay. Okay, so that's the oak. And so this one to the right is next it's the chinese one right and what is the chinese one, oh, called? The one of, yeah the chinese tallow yes is nick and the crepe myrtle is me on the other page chinese tallow and the crepe myrtle is lisa okay chinese tallow but there what does is, what does a chinese tallow look like that's something i want to look at and see but i shouldn't do it right now Okay. So. I'm totally impressed with this. Thank you very much. It's going to be a lot of fun watching them grow. So this is Lisa. To the right is Nick and to the left is Diane. How cool is that going to be? Yes, this is going to be something to look forward to. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks again. So, it's guys, stay tuned to the progress so we can see what's going to happen next. <laughs> So I have a crepe myrtle that I really love, and I'm seeing how you propagate there. 
and I, I'm going to be trying some of that too. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. That'll be really good. I have um, lilac bushes that I need to do that with. So any input on how to propagate the lilac bushes, I'd appreciate that. And the um, oh, it's also gardenia a bush. I have a gardenia bush that I want to propagate. So I brought up your dude. She wasn't feeling well, so we had to um, do this, just the two of us. But we're glad you're here, dude. We're missing a what? He called her abroad. Dude, you're going to get in trouble now. Oh, Hampton Consolva says it's also called a popcorn tree. The what? The crepe myrtle? Which one? Cyclonic says you should see the Australian bottle brush trees we have in our front yard i have never heard of that why don't you send pictures yes send me a picture cyclonic no, and, uh, and send it to diane's cabin 22 at gmail so we can see what you're talking about make sure you tell me what it is because there's no way i'll know probably broads don't like being called broads you're right they don't it's a derogatory Okay, so so Steve says, so you cannot root crepe myrtle in water. This one was put in fertilizer, infused water. Oh, thank you. And now has been planted in soil. The Chinese tallow is called the popcorn tree. Okay, okay. Chinese tallow. That makes sense. That's cool. Very cool. Thank you for sharing with that with Hampton Consultants. I right, We appreciate that so much. This is going to be kind of fun to see how he's going to do that and how it's going to turn out. I'm looking forward to that. Very, very fun. Well, does anybody have any questions? Gosh, it's almost 3 o'clock Central Time, 4 o'clock Eastern. Um, we've got 16 people here. Um, 19 people. Wow. People have been popping in. They're coming in late. <laughs> so I didn't, I really didn't know that Goldenrod had so many uses and they're interesting uses. <laughs> I know, right? Who would have thought? I mean, if you need a skin lotion, you got that. You need a foot soak, you got that. It if sounds you, like it's good for the personal stuff. Definitely. <laughs> if you need to douche, you can douche. <laughs> Just make tea and use it for everything. Um, drink it for when you've got upper respiratory issues. Um, if you need energy. I mean, you know what? And I do notice the difference. When I drink this, I, I just, a little bit, I could drink, you know, I don't know, two ounces, maybe four ounces, and I can feel the energy surge in my body. Really? Yeah. You can feel it? Mm -hmm. So, but does it, how's it taste? Is it, did you say it was? It's kind of like green tea, but a little fruitier. Fruitier. Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's more subtle, more so, not so. To me, green tea is aggressive. I I feel I have an aftertaste with green tea. I feel on me, but I don't have an aftertaste with the golden rug. Oh, that's good. Give Lisa my contact information, phone and email, and I can give her tips on rooting and propagating lilac. You got it, Hampton Consultants. I shall send her your stuff. All right. There you go. So fluff nugget. Have hemorrhoids stick a golden rod on the backside. Ew. <laughs> ow ow <laughs> ow i don't think so i think you have to draw the properties out first before you do that kind of stuff and what if there's bugs on them it yeah right good you gotta wash them first i don't i don't recommend that take them out well that was the other thing when i harvested you know i harvested well you see how long these are that's because they were just short they're not that tall these i think maybe were yeah, they weren't even quite thigh high. But those back there, they were up to here on me. And I grabbed down to where I saw the first sign of getting old leaves and broke it off. And as I was breaking it off, the leaves were falling in my hand. And I was like, I wish I would have had a bag to put those in there because they were harvesting themselves. And it was, it was pretty cool. Um, so, you know... You could harvest this 
this long of a piece and utilize. And what's really cool is how easy those leaves come off to where you can stick them, you know, but I decided, well, you just saw how fast that, I mean, look, this has only been up there since last Tuesday. No, Wednesday, Tuesday night. And it's already, it's already crinkly. Listen, oh, they, they're pretty small leaves. They, they look pretty fragile. But look at that. How cool. But they started off pretty dried out already. So I guess, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I like it. I like that golden rod. Oh, because of the fact that they are beneficial to kidney health. There is a lady that I know of, and she had shared with me, and she is going to try the the uh, goldenrod tree tea to where she has one kidney left. And um, when they do the test to see how her kidney is doing or whatever, they take a urine test to see how much protein is in her urine. And so we're hoping that the goldenrod will help to to um, neutralize whatever damage is being trying to be done and help to heal it back to where she gets test results so that she will not have to go on dialysis in time. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to test this out and see how this works with her. Um, I'm going to give her. The doctors her are okay with that health. though. Huh? The doctors will be okay with that though, right? She doesn't take any medication for it. Okay. You know, so she's going to take a mason jar. We're going to give her a mason jar. Every other, you know, well, until maybe, maybe sorry. what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're okay. Um, we're gonna give her a mason jar and then she'll drink that down and then give her a week or however long it takes her to drink that time off and then she can start again. She sees her doctor in November. Okay, so we're gonna see if we can see some progress and we'll know by the progress by the blood work, I guess. Okay. That's an interesting experiment. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it is supposed to support your kidneys and clean them out. And you know, it it basically it works the ecosystem of your body, the golden rod. So I'm excited about that. You know, I feel all that mucus and stuff breaking up. You can hear it breaking up. Wow. And uh, the coughs are not so dry. They're actually finally getting rid of clumps from allergies. I think it's from sniffing the golden rod. <laughs> Could be. No. Every time I go outside, I don't care if I'm mowing the yard, going for a walk with Owen in his stroller, or outside just doing whatever. I come back in the next day, especially if it's windy. This is what I do. This is what I sound like. You know. Just sensitive, I guess. Well, you have a wonderful day too, Wilson. I'm glad you were here. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, freaking awesome. I just have I have my, the magical typing happening, and you can't see that I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, freaking awesome! Thank you for. I'm glad you're in here. I appreciate it. I yeah. want to thank everybody. What did he say, Mr. Hampton Consultant said? I'm going to hand pollinate my cucumbers and cantaloupes tomorrow. I will try and take pictures. Oh, good. Oh, didn't you send a picture of a cantaloupe? I didn't put that up there. Who? Mr. Hampton Consultants. I missed that. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my squash are going crazy. They're it's really time of year. Well, you still have to blow, and then they because of the heat, and now that it's getting cool at night, they're starting to grow again. And my ginger is popping up. Ginger is popping up like it's yeah. breaking through. Yeah, I have four leaves on my ginger plant, and it's this tall. Finally, that is so cool. And oh, I should next time I'll have to show it to you. I'll have to bring them in. I put them in a bigger pot because they need more room. And the fact that they get so tall, I put them in that. But um, the, mm. the the turmeric root is growing, so the turmeric. But they have such That's gorgeous great. leaves. I know it's pretty. I didn't know it was such a pretty plant. I know. No lips. Lisa's lips aren't moving. She's reading chat. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was. I was listening to Diane. Oh, are you? Does she look frozen? 
You are your pro. Oh. oh my. That's okay. Uh oh. How do I do that? Can you refresh even where you're in? That's you know what? I don't know how you do that. Is it back? No. Nope. Can you is is my volume okay? Yeah, your volume's great. Hmm. We, we noticed there was some freezing going on earlier today, but I don't know how to make it. Lisa <laughs> is, Lisa is a ventriloquist. That's right, she is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, great volume, but just can't. You put, go ahead and put your Push face live on. again? How do you do that? Do what? Put your the camera back on there. Yeah, it's the same thing, though. If you refresh, is that going to kick you out? If you I don't come back. Oh, it did. All right, we're going to wait for her to come back. Thank you, Doughboy, for coming in. There she is. She's back. <laughs> she Sorry. refreshed me. Maybe that's why people would come and go like they do in other streams. But now it looks, now I'm seeing it. You're good. You're good. Well, we're going to take off anyway, guys, next week. Oh, my goodness. Oh, just wanted you guys to know this is a new season and we are gearing up for the fall and prepare, preparing for winter. Who knows how that, what that's going to look like. Um, we'll be looking into making an all-purpose clean powder. Um, how our essential oils can benefit us throughout the winter months. There's some things coming up with this month's essential oil package. It's amazing. It's really cool. Can't wait to share it. I'm this month. I'm pretty excited about well, last couple months. It was like, I got the oil. That's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's going to be time to start preparing for holiday and Christmas gifts. So, um, can we use what we learned this summer to give a gift of love throughout, you know, the knowledge of our wild edibles and our salves and the things that we're learning to make. Let's talk about that throughout the season and think about that. Um, if you need, uh, do me a favor and uh, send me an email so that I can send you an email that we're coming on just to give you a notification because sometimes YouTube doesn't notify you that it's we're, we're coming on. Sometimes they do, but more important, thank you to Fuzz. More importantly, wouldn't you say, Lisa, it's always good to know what's coming in chat and how you might be able to attribute, contribute? Mm -hmm. Yeah, send your pictures. We love you. So, Gypsy, wild edibles. That's what I was doing earlier. I think you might have missed it, but we can recap. A blueberry vodka something. <laughs> He's just stuck on blue vo blueberry vodka. I don't think vodka. vodka comes in the wild, but it makes you wild. <laughs> no, but the blueberries do. Blueberry. Blue, he wants blueberry vodka lip balm. Oh, mm. <laughs> Might taste a little good, huh? <laughs> I'm not that good at doing the chemistry of all that. When you get my info from Diane, Lisa, text is better than email, but whatever you prefer. Uh, okay, text is fine. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm excited that you guys are going to get to connect and do that. Very, very cool. So everybody, I don't know, Lisa, do you have any final words to share? Thank you very much to everyone who joined us today. It is really nice to chat with you. And thank you, Diane. Well, thank you. I'm glad you were here. We miss you, Nick. I'm just going to say oh. it. We miss you. you oh, yeah. First. So Thomas Zinda didn't miss the Goldenrod show. He kind of did. I'm sorry. You're good. <laughs> You're gonna have to go to back up and see the the replay. I'm sorry, Thomas. It's got a lot of interesting uses. You might want to have a look yeah. at that goldenrod stuff for sure, for sure. But Thomas, thank you for coming in. Appreciate it, anyhow. And um, guys, yeah, it's after three. We're gonna go ahead and say goodbye, and uh, see you next week. And thank you, much everybody. love, absolutely, hearts and. We appreciate you all for coming in here. Thank you so much. Have, Have a wonderful day. afternoon. Absolutely. Bye, guys.